Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can hear, I have a little cold. Um, I haven't had a cold in like three years, but um, yeah, so I have a cold. Anyway, um, today I want to answer a question. I receive lots of questions and um, private messages and emails and and I do respond to lots of people. I, I can't respond to everybody, but I do try. I'm recording again today. I'm really trying to get on um, once a week or a couple of times a week. So I will be able to answer more, interact more, because I, I love doing this, love it. So. Let's get started. Oh, if you're wondering about this cute little mug, my daughter got me this. So for those of you who follow me on my other platforms like Instagram, Facebook, you know that I'm an actress and I'm taking professional acting classes. And so final scenes were about a week ago and my family came to my final scene in which I killed it. <laughs> I did so good, guys. I kind of cried at the end, but um, she had this little bag and she's like, mommy, this is for you. And I just thought it was so cute. I have so many mugs, like I don't even know how many I have, but she knows that I love mugs a lot and she got me this one it's a little cactus so good daughter all right so let's get down to the nitty-gritty mr james you didn't think i forgot about you did you let's see here hun okay First of all, I'd like to say congratulations for being in the RN program. Like, that's huge. And you're young and you're intelligent and you're about to do this. So let me answer the question without further ado. So this is what the question says. Uh, James said, I am James. Um, I am currently in an ASN program, which seems very intense because everything is rushed into two years and is focused on passing the NCLEX. More than half of my class has been weeded out already. Looking at your page, it says that you also went through an ASN program before you completed your BSN. How would you compare the two? Is one more difficult than the other? Also, I was looking into a bridge program that allows you to bridge your ASN to your NPMSN. What do you think about this kind of program? Would you recommend getting your BSN or working first? Thank you for your response. Continue to inspire and keep up the amazing job. Oh, thank you. So first of all, let me say thank you for submitting the question. Thank you for following me on my platforms. Thank you for watching my videos. Like I make these because I want to help people. And when I get messages, when I get comments, when I see how many people are watching my videos, I know that I'm helping somebody. And the, the plan is to help at least one person. So when I do more than that, okay, so <laughs> let me get to answer your question. Let's go with the first thing. First of all, um, the program's very intense. Everything's rushed into two years and is focused on passing the NCLEX. More than half of your class has been weeding out, has been weeded out. Uh, yeah, the ASN program is pretty intense. And if you think about it, this is a really serious job. You are going to have people's lives in your hands. So as an associate degree prepared nurse at the bedside, 
I encountered so many instances where a patient could have died and I was able to catch it because of the education that I received, because of the skills I had acquired over some time. Example, I'll never forget, you guys know that I like stories. I'll never forget this um, time I was working in a skilled rehab unit and I don't wanna say everything usually runs smooth, but the patients, and I can't say they're stable, because <laughs> how many times have you gotten a patient that should not be coming to a skilled nursing facility because they are not, um, it just doesn't seem like they're stable. And you're doing the admission and you're thinking, what the heck? So yeah, so I won't make those statements that the patients are stable and everything runs pretty smooth because it doesn't. So I came in one night and a patient that I had had multiple times and I had grown very fond of, uh, during report, the nurse told me the patient um, was complaining of chest pain with every breath. And so I said, hmm, that's awkward. He never complains of pain. And she said, well, I gave him some oxycodone and you know, I, it helped a little bit, but he is saying, you know, when he takes a breath in, there's pain and then he's okay. But every breath, he has this pain on the left side of his chest. So I said, okay. I said, you know, let's stop report. Let's go down and assess the patient together. I just want to make sure he's okay because it's really weird that he's complaining of pain. He never complains of pain. As long as he'd been in that facility, he had never used the oxycodone and he had been there for like two months or like a month and a half. And so I thought, this isn't right. I could feel it in my gut. So we walk into the room and he's there and he's laughing and talking. I think he was on the phone, but every so often when he would take a breath and then he'd keep going and he did feel a little short of breath. So, you know, I assessed him and I, I said, something's not right. He needs to go to the hospital. He might have a pulmonary embolism. I mean, he's not right. I knew he wasn't right. So we called the doctor and she said, oh, if he's, you know, his behavior is the same, he's laughing, he's talking. I don't know. He can probably wait till morning until I come. And I remember, I am so non-confrontational, but I remember saying, no, he is in danger. He needs to go to the hospital. So she eventually said, you know what? Okay, you think he needs to go to the hospital? Go ahead and send him. I said, okay, thank you. I sent him and guys found out this man was, he had two massive blood clots in his lungs, in both lungs, blood clots. And he was in ICU, like as soon as they got him there, he started crashing just all of a sudden. And so he ended up in ICU and they were putting filters in and all of this stuff. And he did live, but um, that was a close call. And the doctor, I remember like the next night or the next day, she called back to the facility because she was on call that night. That's why we were calling her. And it was after hours and stuff when we called her with this. And she thanked me and she said, you saved my butt. So yes, <laughs> the program's very intense, but it needs to be because people's lives are in your hand. And I know that you know that. I know that you know that and I know I know in my heart for some reason that you're gonna be really good at this and I'm so excited for you. So as far as the program being intense, yes, you know, just get through it and take in as much information as you possibly can. Just let it marinate, take it all in because you're gonna need it. So the intensity of the program, you know, 
all of them are intense from my experience. Um, as you guys know, my ASN program was through Excelsior. So I did, I did an online program because I was already an LPN. That's another story. If you want me to tell you the whole story about that, finishing that program in less than a year, doing my clinical in Madison, Wisconsin, um, freaking out because it was scary, let me know and I will do a video about it. So, so yes, as far as the first question, the first part of your question, James, very intense. Um, I think they focus so much on the NCLEX because if you don't pass it, you won't be able to practice. So a lot of it is based on, you know, well, not a lot of the program being based on the NCLEX, but yeah, at a certain point in the program, it is, it is a lot about that test. That test is huge. Um, and if you guys want, I can do a video about the NCLEX when I took it, even though I didn't, I did an online program and I still pass the NCLEX on the first try. So I can tell you guys what I used to study and whatnot, if you'd like to see that. So moving forward, looking at your page, it says that you went through the ASN program before you completed your BSN, yes. How do you compare the two? When I did the ASN program, of course I was an LPN, like I was just saying, I did the online program and they're, they're completely different. When I did the BSN program, I, I went to school once a week and I actually went to class. I went to Indiana Wesleyan University, which is in Indianapolis, and I did my BSN. I graduated in 08, so I started the program in 06, graduated in 08. So it was a, it was an 18-month program. So anyway, um, I loved that program. Like so far, out of all of the programs that I've been in, I don't know why the BSN program was like my favorite. I did not feel like it was difficult. There were papers, but there were there was lots of group work. And I liked that. We did skits and we had a lot of presentations. We had to build a portfolio and I was nervous about building my portfolio because it ended up being huge. And I'm going to show, you know, let me show you guys my portfolio. Um, I'm so proud of it. I still have it. And it's been, I graduated in 08. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's been 10 years. Where does time go? I graduated from the BSN program 10 years ago. That's scary. <laughs> so let me show you guys my portfolio from the BSN program. I was so nervous because they told us this portfolio is gonna be huge. And you know, I thought, oh my gosh. So I'll show you guys my portfolio. This is my portfolio. RMBS academic portfolio. At the time, my name was LaDuana Velez. <laughs> That's back then. So I started with a page for personal introduction, and of course, I made mine all girly and whatnot. And then we've got the personal introduction there that I wrote out, and then professional experience in which we did um oh i started putting letters from different family members of patients i had cared for and then there's my employee of the month certificates and then more letters from patients that i cared for and i just posted them inside of my portfolio these are all cards from patients that i cared for so I made that a part of my professional experience. All cards. I have tons of cards. I mean, I can't even count, but look at that cute little design I did. So yeah, that was cute. I think this is my favorite part of the portfolio. 
um, all of the cards that I received from family members in the past, prior learning experiences, and community health. I really enjoyed that class because I did, where is it? Yeah, because I actually did 32 hours at a community health facility and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much. So there is a clinical component. Reflective exemplar. So this was the paper that we did about um, how we would change our little part of the world. Developmental plan. So, oh, I forgot about this. So yeah, we had to do a project proposal. So we had to do a project. Oh, now that I think about it, this program was, it was, it, it was a lot at some points. Um, but it, but it still was my most, I enjoyed it. So this was my project proposal. And in the project proposal, we went pretty deep on making a change. This reminds me of the doctorate program a bit. So yeah, so the portfolio was built and it was just built piece by piece, class by class. They told us what went in the portfolio and you know the different sections of the portfolio was graded. And so it wasn't a have this big portfolio, it was a process. And before you know it, you've got all of this material. So of course I made my portfolio girly, all girly and cute because that's who I am. <laughs> and um, the BSN program for me going to class one day a week, I went on Mondays, um, one or two days a week, now I can't remember, but I went on Mondays and maybe another day, I think, but it was awesome. I, I liked that, um, I, just, I really enjoyed the program. It was an awesome program. Um, not as intense as the ASN to me. Everyone has a different opinion. Guys, comment below on whether your ASN program was more intense than your BSN program. For me, it was. The BSN was just more focused on um, community stuff. And I what I remember most about the BSN was how we kept talking about how you were gonna change things in your little part of the world, being world changers. And that really resonated with me. I My view of nursing expanded a bit and um, the program really opened my mind up. And at that point in the BSN program, I started asking questions about the nurse practitioner programs. So let's see here, is one more difficult than the other? I answered that. Also, I was looking into a bridge program that allows you to bridge from your ASN to your NP MSN. What do you think about this kind of program? Would you recommend uh, getting your BSN first? So that was his last question. So the ASN to NP bridge, there's quite a few of those out now. 
and I'm gonna give my personal opinion on that. Let's see. Oh, because he asked, do I think, oh, so he asked, what do you think about this kind of program and would you uh, recommend getting your BSN and working first? My personal opinion on that, and a lot of the nurse practitioner groups, this has come up. it's controversial. <laughs> Some nurse practitioners feel like you should get as much experience as you can with your ASN, BSN, and then transition to nurse practitioner because you, you do use your knowledge base from previous experiences. Have I used my knowledge base from being an LPN, CNA, LPN, ASN, BSN, have I used that in my present position? Yes. I've seen things in the past that physicians have done and that nurse practitioners have done and I, I remember questioning things. And, and that's here. And I, I know it because I've seen it so much. So my experience, I'm just gonna... I worked on a skilled nursing rehab unit for about nine years. And then a cardiac step down unit shortly. And then a skilled uh, spinal cord injury unit. Four years or four and a half years or four years before um, going into the NP program. So, the things I saw over that span of time, I saw people managing um, Coumadin and, or Warfarin and example, I'll never forget this magnificent, intelligent, just this doctor that just was everything <laughs> and so humble. He was managing a patient's Coumadin and I remember that I used to pretend like if this was my patient, this is what I would do in my mind because I was in MP school. And I remember asking him when he made a decision about the cumin in the, and I thought, why did he make that decision? And I asked him, I said, why did you prescribe this? I just, I want to know because I don't understand. And he told me in a nutshell, Look at the numbers, yes, but look at the trend. Look at the trend. So that stayed with me. If I wasn't there and I wasn't having this experience on the floor, then I wouldn't have a lot of the things that I have and that I'm able to go off of. I wouldn't have that in my current practice. Now, so that part of me feels like if you're able to have experience as a nurse for a bit and then transition to the MP program, great. You are going to benefit from that. A long time ago, I received a question from someone. She said, well, she said, I work in labor and delivery and or GYN or something like that. And I don't know if I could do the NP program and work in family practice. I've never done that. And I told her, whatever it is that you do before you get to the NP program, it just gives you um, a running start on that section of being a family NP. So you worked in GYN, so you, when you get to women's health, you are gonna be ahead of people. You know, and for me, when we got to ortho type things, I was ahead because I worked on a spinal cord injury unit. And when we got to geriatrics, I was ahead because I've worked with that patient population. So, so I told her, whatever it is that you've done on at the bedside, on the floor or whatever, you can bring that when you get into the MP program. 
So now I'm going to transition to, it's okay for you to do it that way if you want to. And the reason why I say that, I say that it's okay if you do want to do um, ASN to NP, can you do that? Yes, you can do that because number one, when you're in the ASN program and you're done and you transition to this NP program, all that time that you're in the, in the NP program, you're going to be working as an associate degree prepared nurse. So you're going to get experience um, that you can use. So you'll still get the experience. Have I seen people do that before? Go from ASN to NP? Yes. And they're doing well. So I personally refrain from telling people what they can't do because you guys know where I come from. You know that everybody told me I could not. And I told myself that I could. So I just won't ever tell somebody like, don't do it that way. It's going to be too hard. Will it be easier to have a nice amount of experience and then go on to be an NP? Yes, you'll be well-rounded. You'll have a lot to go off of. Yes, that's the easier route to me. But if you don't want to do that, James, you can do ASN to NP. Just get a little, get some experience. So you're going to have experience as a nurse along the way. And by the time you graduate with your NP, hey, you've been working as an RN for like four years or four and a half years, however long that program is. So you're still going to get that. You're still going to have your experiences and things that you can go off of. So should you do it that way? If you really want to, you can. Well, I feel like I've been talking for a really long time and I am going to cut this um, video short now. <laughs> James, I hope I answered your question. I know that I got off kilter with my little stories and stuff, but I hope it helps. I have some other people that I want to answer that have really pulled at my heartstrings. And I am gonna get to you guys. As you can see, I'm making an effort to be on here more. And it's so much fun, I love it. So, so I hope this video helped you guys. And I will be uploading again soon. Quite, I meant, <laughs> question. Comment, like, subscribe, share. And let me know what videos you guys want to see. I speak to advanced practice nurses and also RNs, ASNs, BSN, LPN, because I've done it all. So I have an opinion about it all. Follow me on my other social media platforms. I'm on Instagram. If you like to know what I'm doing with my life and little snapshots of my life, Instagram, Snapchat. I'm also on Facebook. So look me up, don't be a stranger. And I will see you guys in the next one. This was so much fun. I hope it helped James and I wish you luck. I wish you luck. I know that you're going to do well. Love you guys. Bye.